It is time to check out Olo Salon and Pilot House. Come on aboard for part two of your VIP tour. In part one of your VIP walkthrough, we gave you a look at Olo's cockpit. We brought you up on the aft deck and we took a deep dive into Olo's galley. And now, according to Jasper, the tour continues. All right, moving on from the galley and moving just forward of the refrigerator is the area we like to call the writer's desk. If you read any of the things we write at myolo.com, this is where a lot of that writing takes place. You certainly can't beat the view depending on where we're tied up, and it's just a great spot with a couple of chairs and we leave our computers set up here. Original artwork, by the way, by the Admiral. That's right. Moving forward past the writer's desk is this wraparound settee. We really like the layout and the functional storage underneath it, so we decided to recover it rather than replace it. Just opposite are these really comfortable barrel chairs, which we plan to recover. And we love the big windows of this salon, which really bathe it in sunlight. So Tim mentioned that we moved the... Really? <laughs> So Tim mentioned that we took out the entertainment center that was on board when we first got the boat so we could put in the full-size fridge. So the TV had to go somewhere. It didn't make any sense in the corner where it was, right Jasper? Because you'd be sitting on the couch and craning your neck to try to watch it. Yes, okay. I'll give you love while I explain the TV. One of the great things that Tim did when he modified the galley area was he saved the beautiful teak wood uh, from these wonderful Taiwanese craftsmen who built this boat and built this entertainment center over here where at the push of a button we have our salon TV. We found the perfect lift for it, we found the perfect size television to work. Rather than mixing it in with the surround sound system that existed on the boat, we ended up going with the sound bar. It just made a lot of sense. We love Bob Ross, by the way. We find him to be very soothing. We do use uh, Harmony for our remote control for our multimedia system on Olo. It's just a nice system. We use it at our homes and it's something that we're accustomed to, plus there's an app on the phone and it works through the internet and it's really super easy and cool to program. All right, so moving forward, we come to Olo's pilot house and you can immediately see why we love the sight lines on this boat so much. We have our mesh screen up for some protection right now, but we always have said if this wasn't a bridge boat, we would be perfectly happy with this as the only place that you could run the boat from. We do prefer to run from up on a bridge whenever the weather's conducive to do so, but we really do love sitting here. The platinum pomponet uh, helm seat is fantastic. We have all the controls really exactly where we like to have them. I, I think this, ergonomically speaking, is an excellent design for a helm. I particularly believe and have heard a, a, a lot of old salt say having your compass and your primary chart plotter directly in front of you and uh, with your main helm right there is kind of the alignment that you want. Everybody has their opinion. That's how we like it. Moving from port to starboard, we have our little station here where we recharge our radios. By the way, we love our little Midland walkie-talkies. These are excellent for walking around on the boat with. Uh, whenever we're underway, we always each have one on ourselves and that way if I'm up on the bridge running the boat and Tim is down below checking the engines, we can uh, call each other immediately if something is up. I, I think it's a really smart and safe move when it's only two people in particular on board so you always can have a sense of where the other person is. We keep our VHF here, a couple pairs of binoculars and on our helm we run an iPad Pro. The apps that we run on the Pro and we'll be doing more on this later but we run Aquamap, we run Navionics Boating, we run Nebo which is an app we love to help log our trips, we run the Active Captain app, we also really really love the mount that we use which is the RAM mount and we can move it around if necessary. Just to the right of that we have a display which shows whatever data we happen to choose. We like it big for our depth, and this is often where Tim is standing while we're underway. It's just nice to have the big depth reading in front of us. By the way, we are not in uh, 3.9 feet of water. Everybody has their own method for how they like to show their depth on their boat. We know that we always have at least three, it's really three feet one inch more than what is showing on that display below the boat. 
As long as we have five feet in total, we are good. We have one of our two VHFs. Right next to that, just below it, is the control for our Westmar roll fin stabilizers. We have a pair of Garmin 7612 displays for our multifunction displays. And as much as I would love to have 16 or bigger displays, this helm, it, it doesn't make any sense to try to jam more in here. And it really is fine. You know, I love a big screen, but this is really uh, quite sufficient for our needs. Moving further to the right, this is the power for our yacht controller. We have an ICOM uh, 604 VHF radio, which is duplicated up top. Just below that, this control box is for our Voyager uh, camera multiplexer. This is certainly circa 2004, if not older. This was original equipment on the boat, and it is the sort of brains of the black and white cameras that cycle through. We have each of our engine rooms as well as a camera off of our bridge aft deck. And that is something we'll be replacing and probably putting in uh, IP cameras that we're already pre-wired for that we're going to run into our Garmin units. Haven't gotten around to that yet. Our autopilot control, this is the Simrad AP20. And when we upgraded the electronics when we first purchased Olo, we were willing to do whatever we needed to do. We upgraded the displays, obviously. We put in uh, new radar. We added AIS and a few other things. And we said to our electronics guy, who only stood to make money off of us, Steve, we would you know, obviously replace the autopilot if you think we should. And he said, this is one of the best autopilots ever made. Please continue to use it as long as it works. So we do. It integrates really well with the system that we ended up putting on board. If you head on over to myolo.com and click on the project section, we've got a detailed write-up on Olo's electronics refit. My, how things have thankfully changed. These are the displays for our Detroit Diesel slash MTU Series 60 uh, 825 horsepower engines. It's, you know, a little dated in its performance in that it takes a bit of scrolling through the various menus to get the data to display that you want, but it has everything we need right there. I do love the fact that we have electronic throttle and shift controls on the boat. I do like this particular controller. Just forward of that, we have emergency manual controls. Should the electronic controls ever fail, we can go right to the manual controls where we can control both the gears as well as the throttles. Just to the right of that, we have our Westmar stern thruster control, which is a variable speed control, and our bow thruster control, and that's really just on or off, starboard or to port. Spotlight control ahead of that. We do have a handheld control for our Garmin displays. If I'm just feeling too lazy to reach forward and actually touch a button. Actually, the main reason we did this was uh, Steve, our electronics guy, who is simply awesome, uh, suggested that we put in a fixed mounted control because if you are in heavy seas, sometimes the touch displays are a little difficult to work. So we looked for a good place to put a fixed controller and there really wasn't one at this helm or up at our bridge helm unless we mounted it on the helm chair, which we didn't want to do. So this gets the job done. If we're ever in a rough sea, I can just control our displays using this and this will work on all of them that are on the boat. And I did fail to mention the most important piece of navigational equipment we have on this boat for situational awareness and just knowing where you're at. It's our marker minder. If I had nothing else but a compass and a marker minder and a chart maybe, I think we could do okay. The marker minder is actually terrific. And depending on where we're headed, we flip it around. So <laughs> if all of a sudden you just have forgotten which way you're going, where you're supposed to be, uh, and you see a red marker coming up, you glance down at this, oh right, I am on the correct side of this marker minder. Don't ask us why we found this to be such a helpful thing to have, because there is a story there. Just below the helm, we have our generator controls as well as our nav service controls. Those are just breakers, basically, for the various devices within our navigational arsenal. And our 12-volt panel. Just below the 12-volt panel is our tank watch for our Blackwater holding tank. We'd very much like to upgrade the sensor and the system to work it into our onboard electronics. And that's one of those projects that is down the line. Of course, another intercom. Maybe I'll call one of the extensions right now. Chilo. 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 <laughs> what would you like from the galley? Yeah, we don't use it at this distance usually. But hell, why not? Our guests get a kick out of it. Just below the starboard side of the helm is our safety panel, and we have indicator lights here that show us the state 
of the nav lights, the generator, the anchor light, our various bilge pumps, whether they're running, have power, or there's a high water alarm going off, and of course, our Fireboy system, uh, which we have inspected every year. And if we needed to set it off in an emergency, this is where the manual controls are. One other feature we really love about Olo's helm is the wheel. We often refer to it as our SS Minnow wheel. Now, when we first got on board and had grand designs of doing a very modernist refit to the boat, I think one of the first things we said is, well, that wheel's nice, but it's got to go. And it turns out to be one of our favorite sculptural pieces. It is just a beautiful work of art, and we love that it's here. We will never get rid of it, and we hope it will stay on this boat forever. One of the things that was a requirement for us when we were looking for our next boat was to have a, a real pilot house with pilot house doors. And I like the fact that we have them both to port and starboard. It's a huge help whenever we're pulling into port and to be able to just walk off the side here, get a good look at proximity to a dock. And when I have the yacht controller on me, it obviously is very easy to get on and off and have quick access to the helm if I need to get back here. But I don't think we could have another boat without that, that kind of access to the decks. So just at the top of the stairs to Olo's lower deck is our AC panel, which gives us full control over our 50 amp, 240 volt service, a generator control. We can switch between the basically four exterior power sources. Uh, Olo carries two 50 amp cords on Glendinning cable masters, and then we have two additional ports where we can plug in a static cable that we have and we keep stowed away in case we need twin 50s to run everything on the boat all at once without issue. But this is basically the master control center, everything nice and neat right here. And I love how accessible it is to the main helm, just like the 12 volt panel. You never know when you're going to need to access something quickly. All right, you ready to follow Jasper down to Olo's lower decks? We've got a look at our accommodations and of course, Olo's terrific bridge deck. And that can all be seen in part three. For now, if you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Be sure to hit the like button and whack that notification bell so you don't miss a moment of the continuing adventures of Olo.